very fortunate and I'm very happy for these seniors and the staff to have the opportunity to play in probably one of the most historic venues in college football. I think most people grew up watching uh, the Cotton Bowl. It's, it's undergone a, a major renovation to bring it into the 21st century. Uh, as I've learned more about this bowl, I come to find that, uh, that, that the not-for-profit organization that's been set up is a, is a charity uh, that each year will pick a, a particularly uh, noteworthy cause within uh, the Dallas area, and uh, this year's for the homeless, which uh, uh, is great to see a bowl game is trying to contribute back to the, uh, to the community. So being one of five the Big Ten schools playing on January 1st, that's the day you're supposed to be playing on bowl games. And uh, we'll get to lead off the day and uh, get them all to a fast start. So uh, we're delighted. And again, on behalf of these seniors and this staff, they, they uh, when nobody else kind of thought they could get off the mat, uh, they found a way at Iowa, found a way at Illinois, found a way at Indiana. We like the W flag flying over the stadium, and that would be our intent coming back on January 1st. Continue to have it flying. Patrick. Yeah, just a quick uh, note. Uh, we are overly excited to uh, be invited to uh, Dallas and play in the heart of the uh, Part of Texas game with these guys next to me. This is the reason why uh, you play the game, and uh, for them, it's going to be a great experience. And we just can't wait to go down there and start the day off with a uh, against a quality opponent. And we're going to have such a great time that uh, we're going to have smiles on our faces all the way down, all the way back. <laughs> um, uh, we just all had it in our mind that we never doubted and, and we never questioned uh, that this season was going to be a downfall. Uh, I mean, we had a high expectations for ourselves and. We didn't come up to it, but we did uh, succeed that we was going to get to a bowl game. A bowl game, didn't matter which one. Uh, as long as we got to one, uh, a lot of the freshmen and the seniors, uh, they, the whole team would be happy and, you know, fortunate to go to one. It's really just been a blessing, you know. It's been a roller coaster year. It's been kind of crazy. But uh, to be in this uh, opportunity now, it's a blessing. Uh, we kind of got the ball moving a little bit with the three games we've won uh, in a row. So hopefully we get the fourth. We're looking for uh, looking for the W. And uh, we know we have to put a lot of hard work into practice and, and getting ready. But uh, like Coach says, we're extremely happy about the bowl game, uh, extremely happy to be in this position. And uh, there's no other way we want to go out but uh, with the win. Uh, this one is a win. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this one is for, I guess, the whole panel. Playing a Big 12 school, I mean, we all see them. They're, they're putting up numbers as a quarterback. You want to go out there and get the sling against them as a defensive guy. How, how answer you to get out there and kind of stop them? Uh, just facing a lot of these quarterbacks in the Big 10 now, uh, a lot of versus uh, as far as you got guys that can run and pass. And I know we play Big 12. Uh, it, it's going to be a challenge, and, and it, it's up to the defense to step up and try to hold these guys down to uh, minimum points and, you know, keep giving the offense the ball and keep giving them the momentum. And, you know, drive down the field. So, uh, as a defense, we feel like we can we can match up uh, anything, any given Saturday, any given day, pretty much. And you know, uh, it's up to us to, to set our goals and, and our mindset to what we want to do. And just offensively, you know, I'm just gonna keep listening to Coach Higgins. I'm gonna take it one play at a time and get the ball <laughs> in my hand. So, uh, you know, whoever the opponent is, you know, like you said, you see these crazy numbers come out of their conference, and uh, that's why I'm excited about playing someone in their conference. So, uh, just take it one play at a time and uh, and keep moving the ball. Uh, for, for both players, just the significance of playing on New Year's Day. Uh, I don't think you guys are too old to remember that that used to be the, the big day in college football, but just to have the opportunity to play uh, on the first first day of the new year. Uh, just, uh, again, just getting to a bowl game, uh, we feel that uh, it's going to be a privilege and, you know, to play on any day. Uh, it, was a, it was on Christmas or <laughs> Any day, so uh, just as far as us, we just got to take control of and, and do what we need to do and, and make that day a successful day as far as getting the win. I think it's awesome playing in January. It's something, you know, I watched when I was a kid um, growing up, and uh, just like the Outback Bowl being in Tampa was, uh, you know, a January type of game. And uh, the atmosphere normally gets kind of crazy. People get restless and want to watch football. And, uh, you know, when you're kind of beating up on each other the whole time uh, in bowl preparation, you're waiting to play your opponent. So I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, like I said, ever since I was a kid, I've been imagining playing in January. They can get up and have a cup of coffee with us. We'll start the day. <laughs> Patrick, now that you know the date of your game, do you have a pretty loose uh, schedule that you can give us on, on when you might start practicing and sort of what the, the plan is going forward? Sure, yeah. We mapped out a couple of tentative um, schedules last week. So we, are, we have a schedule in place already for this bowl game. We're going to start practice on Tuesday. And then uh, we are going to approximate, uh, have approximately 15 to 16 practices spread out over that period of time.
this one's for Coach uh, Higgins. I know you've been working with your staff, but your mindset going into this this game, interim head coach, kind of what what are you and your staff doing? Anything different with preparing for this game? We're preparing to win the game as we always do. So really, we're not doing anything different. Uh, it's nice that we get a longer time to prepare because we can watch all the film and. We can kind of we can kind of approach it like a spring ball type of deal, uh, because we have such a long time frame before the game. We can really work on getting back to fundamentals, and getting back to basics, and then getting the game plan in. We can have the game plan in, you know, two weeks ahead of time, which is great. So we get to practice that. But uh, just talking to the guys on the staff, we're really excited. It's a great opportunity for us to go out and to show what all our hard work is, and just to to help the kids. Have a great experience down in Dallas. Patrick, what, what have you been doing the last week to, to manage the, you know, the program? What have you been doing this last week to keep uh, things running as smoothly as possible? Uh, just trying to keep the status quo, you know, academically. That's, that's the main focus because finals are coming up dead weeks to make sure that the kids are. Uh, going to class, going to study hall, getting their mentoring in, because this is the time of year sometimes where between the end of your last game and then before final start that sometimes your mind starts to wander. So we made sure that their minds are not going to wander. They're going to be in class. They're going to be in study hall. They're going to meet their mentors uh, so that when we get the academics back on the, uh, the 19th, that uh, it's going to be one of the best semesters we've had. Robert, just from an offensive perspective, when you look at the last three games, mm -hmm. at least almost 400 yards a game and all of those, you know, three consecutive, at least 20 points, what was different with Patrick calling the plays, and, and why do you think you guys were able to maybe click a little bit more in those last three games? You know, I think it's a lot of different situations. Um, our communication, I think, would be the number one. Um, he's done a great job of getting on me when I need him, you know, to, to straighten me up a little bit, but at the same time. Uh, putting in a lot of great situations to get the ball out of my hands. Um, we talked about getting a couple players going. Uh, I don't feel like it was just me and Coach Higgins, but a guy like Shaver steps up and you know runs very strong and the whole line gelling together. But uh, you know the communication and uh, you know he's a very very organized man and uh, he's very clean cut on what he wants and what he needs. So uh, that makes it easy as a quarterback to go out there and just kind of sling it around and understand where I can be free in the system. At the same time, playing within the system to uh, to get the ball and get first downs. Robert, a lot of us talked about last year. If you guys won the bowl game, about just building momentum the next season. Can you maybe just talk about the impact of having a strong performance and kind of leaving that legacy and momentum going into next year for the guys coming behind you? Yeah, that's a huge deal for me. Um, you know, I I got to start the last four games of the season, and the opportunity arose for me, and and, and I wanted to make the most of it. And uh, and like you know, a guy like KK and. And all the other seniors, you, you've been with these guys for four years, you know, and, and things got rough, and you know the bad times were there for us this year, and uh, we haven't forgot those times. And uh, it's fun to win football games. It's fun to go out there and beat IU by 21 points. Like that was a fun time. So uh, we want another experience like that. That's what we're looking for. Um, I'm looking to have fun with the younger quarterbacks, from Blau and Alfie and the rest of the guys, and uh, in practice and seeing what they're going to do in uh, game type situations during practice. And just to jump in real quick, just so you guys know, Robert set a school record this year for completion percentage. He was 66.2% completion percentage, and that says a lot to his character, you know, coming back from his injury and all the stuff that he had to go through. You know, that's a quality performance for a quality young man. And the other thing I would add is he's a graduate in August, which we like, right? Yeah. And KK graduates in December, so that, that makes it all the more special. Can I go? Yeah, uh, Patrick and, and Robert kind of joked about this the other day too with the playing in the system thing obviously was something that he maybe didn't necessarily do last year at this point what what has been key with your relationship with him is it his just maturation to this point to be able to kind of do what's asked of him and not to do more or is it something that you're able to kind of pull out of him well I think our relationship is good so we can talk to each other and he kind of, we kind of understand because I understand what he likes you understand what I what I like, so it's a combination of the both going together, mm -hmm. and then we just kind of pare down what we're going to do in certain situations, and we get to practice them more, and we get to find out, okay, take your shot here, if not, dump it off, but just make sure we're just trying to stay within the system. We don't need you to win the game. 
And I think, and Robert relayed this to me the other day, he says, when I got to, to start full-time and to know that I'm not coming out of the game, you don't have to go in the game and try to make a play every time you're in there. You have the whole game to make that play. So you have time to grow and to mature within the, within the concept of the game. So that, and I think that helps a lot.